What's up everyone, Tech Me Out here, and today I want to talk a little bit about the Beats Studio Wireless. So many have argued that the Beats headphones lack quality and sound and comfort and durability, but never really in design. Which honestly sparked my curiosity. Are Beats headphones simply a fashion plan accessory or was Dre really onto something with these? I hope to better answer my question in this video with my personal review of the Beats Studio Wireless. So let me start off by saying I'm not an audiophile, I'm not a sound engineer or anything of the sort, simply your average consumer. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at these things. So starting off with the build, the headphones are comfortable, very comfortable actually. I've worn them for an extended period of time doing some casual listening and even surprisingly while I worked out. On the treadmill, that is. I wouldn't suggest wearing them for anything too strenuous, though. But the headband on these are thick, however very soft, as are the cups that rest very nicely over my ear. The band is also durable and adjustable, allowing you to get a more secure fit. You have an array of color choices as well, mine's being the champagne and white model. And we all know Beats are partially a fashion statement, so the look of them without saying is simply gorge. The look alone screams quality. It screams premium. It screams money. But in short, extended use with these is no problem and they definitely warrant a double take. So in reference to comfort and looks, these headphones pass. So moving on to the features, you'll find your Bluetooth controls along the left ear cup. The Beats logo will play and pause the music with a single tap. It'll skip the track with a double tap or go back to the previous track with a triple tap. Above the Beats logo is the volume up button and beneath it is your volume down button. With the built-in mic, you can answer calls without further interrupting what you're doing. Now, what's interesting about this setup is that there is no visual indicators along the ear cup to indicate these actions, just your Beats logo. But I personally like that as it keeps in with the simplistic design. Who needs a symbol on anyway once you know where to press? On the right cup, you'll find a button along the bottom that will serve as your battery indicator and power button. I love this feature because you can quickly get an idea of how much juice you have left at any given moment or you can long press it to shut it on or off. The Bluetooth range is stated to be 30 feet, which for the most part has proven true to me. So with ideal button placement and ease of functionality, I'd say the features of the Beats wireless pass. Now in having a wireless pair of headphones, battery life is something to consider and the studios give you 12 hours of wireless, but 20 hours with the cable. Yep, you heard me right. There is a cable included as an alternate option for listening, but even that requires a bit of juice to work. So a dead battery in these things while on the go renders them useless, even with the cable. However, a cool feature with the cable is that you can turn the headphones on or off by plugging them in or removing them. But one thing I don't like about the cables is that in using them, the button functions along the left ear cup no longer work. That bothered me because I kept finding myself going up to the left ear cup to adjust things, but uh, nah. It's whatever. At the end of the day, I'd give the battery life a slim pass. 12 hours of battery life is decent, but you mean to tell me even with the cord, I can't use the headphones? Nah. Moving on to the next area of discussion, accessories. So you get two cables, one standard cable, which matches nicely with my champagne headphones, and one with the built-in mic, which matches nicely with my hard carrying case. Wait, what? Why couldn't my cable with the built-in mic match my headphones like the standard cables? Not a real fan of this, but I'll deal. The case is hard and will safely protect your headphones against your rough handling, but there are no pockets for your cables inside, but there is room in there if you just want to throw them in. The wall adapter is also the traditional black and red, so it's nothing spectacular or significantly special about it to mention. So the champagne and white theme is only relevant when it comes to the headphones and its standard cable. Everything else flows with a more traditional look, which leaves me giving the accessory section a slim pass. I don't care much for the color placement of things, but it's not a nuisance and I do like what is included. Now on to the meat of the matter, sound. These headphones thump, not in a muddy way, at least to me. However, you definitely can hear the bass, and I love that. It doesn't drown out the mids and highs, but the bass is definitely prevalent, which makes these really a great pair of headphones for R&B, pop, and hip-hop music. Other lighter genres sound great on these headphones as well, with much clarity to enjoy your favorite sounds. However, I personally enjoy listening to hip-hop and R&B the most up here, simply because of the way it sounds. So I've noticed when I crank the volume all the way up on these headphones, you can kind of feel it, you know, like rumble. 
You know, if you put your hand on it, you can feel it thump. Not in a a scary way, but you can feel the bass definitely being amplified. Overall, I give the sound a pass. I don't have any complaints about it. Everything sounds clear and crisp. Now for the last section of discussion, price. The Beat Studio Wireless will run you for $379.95. And to me, that is a bit much. Don't get me wrong. They're a nice pair of headphones. They are beautiful. They sound great. They feel great, but $379, (laughs) Uh, nah, I think I would rather probably auction these off at about maybe $275, $300 maybe, but $379 is just a bit much to me for these headphones. They're a great buy. If you have the money, go ahead and flaunt it, floss it, but if you don't, I'm sure there's some more headphones out there that look just as great and sound just as great that are at a more affordable price. So in reference to the price, to me, it fails. However, in every other category, it seems to pass. Which brings me to my question for this video. What is your favorite type of headphones? Are you a fan of the Beats Studios or Beats Period? Or do you have a preference for another brand of headphones? Whichever the answer may be, drop it down below in the comments section along with any other comments and questions you may have for me. But that does sum everything up for this video. And as always, thanks for taking the time out. Let me tech you out.